Uh, my name is Jacques Isaac. I lead the data business here at Pivotal. And, and by way of introduction, uh, let me start with, I am a longtime Natiza partner in a past life with uh, a services organization that I uh, started, as well as a uh, user and architect of Natiza. Again, kind of a, a long way. And, and you know, what I've, I've come to learn over the last 10 years of working with Greenplum is just how similar these two platforms are and, and how the same philosophies that went into Netiza were actually, you know, kind of born into the, the architecture of Greenplum. And, and that's what makes the, the, the market as it exists today so exciting to me because we actually can offer, you know, other folks who are passionate about Netiza like myself, we can offer them a bridge to getting the same kind of uh, performance and the same kind of analysis and the same kind of uh, ease of use that you're used to with NetEasa, you can get with open source ScreenFlow, but we can do it in a way that doesn't lock you into a legacy um, or proprietary company like IBM. My name is Kelly Kerrigan. I'm a principal consultant with Eon Collective, where I'm focused on data warehousing platforms and the feasibility for migration. I spent 13 years implementing the Natiza infrastructure through all the series and generations of Natiza gear from the Finch through the Mako. And I've uh, been historically a um, user of that application in analytical and reporting applications such as SaaS and MicroStrategy. After IBM's acquisition of Netiza back in 2009 and the port of the hardware over to um, Intel processors, IBM put a end of support strategy in place for each of the subsequent generations of Netiza gear. The last gear in the traditional form factor that they produced has been in the Mako line. So they've issued the previous generation Stripers end of support for June 30th, 2019. This means that unless you have a Mako already and can consolidate all your workload into that, you're left with basically a migration approach as your only option. That's true, Kelly, but but I, I will say that IBM is giving an easy migration option, right, which is migrating to DB2, or, or is that easy? Well, any migration has challenges, as you well know. Unless you stay in the same gear, it doesn't matter if it's the same vendor, it's still a migration. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, and I, I feel like I, I'm giving you a low ball, uh, you know, kind of question there. But, but you know, I, I feel, and I've talked to many NetEasy customers over the years, and and it was an interesting consolidation, right? I, IBM bought NetEasy, EMC acquired Greenplum. Down the line, every Postgres-based MPP solution effectively got sucked up into this kind of consolidation event that happened. And the NetEasy customers that were that were customers customers of mine or prospects of, of ours along the way, you know, to a T with, with some of these older generation, what they said to me uh, uh, quickly amounted to, I didn't buy Netiza to get in bed with IBM. Instead, I bought Netiza to solve a problem. And, and DB2 is not the answer to my problem. And the exciting thing from, from uh, our perspective, from the pivotal perspective, and, and one of the reasons why you know, I actually joined up with Greenplum and, and sort of forwent my Netiza partnership and, and that go to market really is, is kind of the philosophy that we took with Greenplum as we formed Pivotal. And that philosophy is one where we're literally making the, the best massively parallel Postgres implementation that is based upon open source in the world today. And, and uh, you know, I'll tell you a little story. When I, when I first got to Netiza, I actually felt as though um, the, the technology was, was amazing. It was so simplistic. It reminded me of my days at Informix, but it just worked. And when I got to Greenplum, I noticed the architectures, the commands, the DDL, because they were both based off of Postgres, were so similar that it was very easy to kind of get up and running. And, and what I've seen today now is with that event that you talked about, Kelly, where the, the systems are, are actually now in a spot where we've got an end date where we need to get off of them, 
customers are evaluating where do I go? Do I go to a Hadoop based platform? Do I go to the cloud? Do I move this stuff to Oracle? Do I take IBM up on the offer to move it to effectively DB2? And at the end of the day, you know, as you said, no matter what I do, there's going to be some effort involved. And what, what I've seen, honestly, is, is the effort involved in doing the simple migration from a Postgres-based system like Netiza to a Postgres-based sim- system like Greenplum is literally a matter of weeks, not months, not years, but weeks to translate all of that into a system that is so similar. And then, you know, you, you sort of, you know, fast forward to where is Greenplum going? Greenplum literally is the only Postgres-based system to fully commit to, to up-leveling the underlying base version to current versions of Postgres. And so today, what you see in the open source is, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Netiza, Greenplum, all of us kind of forked from Postgres in the 7 and 8 series. And, and we actually, just a couple of weeks ago, committed, you know, the mid-9, so 9.4, into what is eventually going to become Greenplum 6. And, and once we get to Greenplum 7, having, you know, that parity to Postgres means that your ability to have an ecosystem and a community of products, both uh, commercial as well as public, that interact with either your big analytical queries or your online transactional queries in a similar fashion now actually exists. And we've got, you know, commitment from the open source community to continue the development of this platform, which means you're never going to face another pending, you know, end of life product because this product is going to live forever. It's, it's a super exciting time for, for me and, and all of those legacy NetEase customers that I've talked to are, are actually very much um, interested in the offering that we have. I think that the point earlier about the Postgres heritage is really um, really in supports the belief that the migration is very simple compared to other products. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, an organization that's faced with a migration, it, it has a challenge in front of them to make that port as quickly and as low cost as possible. And that really is a, is a differentiator. The original attraction to Netiza came from three simple points, cost reduction, simplification, and performance. That was packaged in an appliance and delivered simply unlike anything prior to it. It was really a disruptive technology in the early 2000s. And as that product matured and and organizations who who bought into Natiza acquired more and more product, they got really accustomed to that simplified management implementation. I think you would ask any Natiza environment today if they were interested in returning to more complex, more costly, and more challenging solutions. The answer is definitely no. So I think the the challenge that that Greenplum has and and has an answer for is to appeal to the original attractions to Natiza plus all of the additional capabilities that Greenplum brings to the table. So, so the, I, I guess the only thing I would add is, you know, again, in the in the 2000s, um, I think Netiza was was created by and large to to have a Teradata that could actually be um, afforded to or afforded by the masses, and and it didn't have every feature or functionality that Teradata had, but you know, it had it had a lot. And, and when Greenplum came to the scene, we were effectively doing the same thing. We were, we were trying to take that mantra of simplicity and that mantra of saving money and implement it, but not doing it tied to hardware, instead tying it to software. So very similar architectures, but done in a different way. And, and I think, again, in the, in the, the time that Netiza grew up, uh, the, the capabilities of many IT orgs were, were pretty, pretty nascent. And so this form factor of an appliance was super attractive. Put it in, put some power in, get networking, and just get up and, and going. Now, over the last 10 years, what we've seen is the capabilities within IT have grown and grown, uh, largely because of other platforms, right? So we have now learned how to manage clusters because of things like Hadoop, for example, because of things 
you know, like like the cloud and, and virtualization. We now understand the the moving pieces and and you know how uh, the disk speed affects the anal uh, analysis speed and how networking when you're moving data from one node to another to do a join. We actually understand that and we have those capabilities. Not only do we understand that though, we actually have a penchant towards it. So so the appliance form factor is really no longer attractive because it doesn't fit my needs specifically. It's kind of a, a best case, you know, fit the needs of, of 70% of, of what you really want. And, and the other 30%, you're just going to have to live without. The real power of Greenplum is that you can have that Netiza experience, but you can do it however you need. You need more CPUs, you get machines with more CPUs. You need more disk storage, you can do more disk storage. You want to deploy that in the cloud, in Amazon or in Google or in Azure, you take that Greenplum software and you can deploy it right in the cloud from either our marketplace offerings or within your own VPC. And I think that flexibility is, is again, something that you just don't see in any other competitor, literally any other competitor that is out there in terms of, of, of that flexibility, in terms of no vendor locking because it's based off of open source. And I think the real magic here is the fact that the architectures between these two platforms are so similar, the ease of migration is, is I, I mean, I couldn't say it enough, the ease of migration is, is really unprecedented. And in fact, it's so unprecedented that you know, our Pivotal Field team, combined with you know, our partners like Eon Collective, you know, we're willing to really step up and, and do a lot of the, the legwork to show you how easy it is and, and what that means I'd, I'd love to, you know, kind of get folks to come in and, and effectively say, here's my schema, here are my queries, show me how easy it is, and we'll run that through our converters and, and literally let you go and start running. I, I just want to say, I mean, when you start talking about containers, you know, it, it makes me dovetail back to the amount of energy that is behind this open source product, behind Greenplum, in the... In the um, Kind of maturity and and extension is is just unprecedented. So you know you talk about containers. You know we're thinking two, three, four years out. How are you going to run platforms like this in the same way that Amazon runs their platforms for you? We're talking about you know how do we deploy and architect solutions that don't just do the terabytes and and in in many of our customers' cases petabytes of implement of of actual data in their clusters, we're, we're trying to figure out how do we get to hundreds of petabytes, to zettabytes, et cetera. Et cetera. We're literally on the front edge of, of kind of the, the, where the market is going to go. Um, that that I, I just think that having a, a view into how do I solve this immediate problem that I have, the Natiza end of life, but still take into account the long haul you know, where do I want to be in the future? I, I just don't think that there's any other real alternative. And just to extend on that, you know, the, the customers that I've talked to that have evaluated alternatives, you know, some alternatives that exist, like let's move our Netiza stuff to, to Oracle, for example. We have Oracle databases. The fact of the matter is the reason Netiza came to the organization was to pull those things out of Oracle so that we could actually get the performance that we were looking for. So moving it back into Oracle really is not a viable option. Some of these other less mature projects like, like Hadoop, for example, the ease of use that I'm used to with Netiza no longer exists inside of a Hive implementation in Hadoop or an Impala implementation. So, so why am I going to make my users suffer when I can actually give them a, the same experience that they have today plus more functionality very easily and very quickly uh, with Greenplum? And so, so I think if you just start looking at all the alternatives, even, even the alternative of going to the cloud, I think at this juncture, every customer that I've talked to has said, it isn't really an and or. I can't just go to the cloud. I need to have the same kind of analytics, the same kind of capabilities on premise. And you just can't get that with the, the, the cloud only products that exist. Greenplum is truly the one thing that gives me that flexibility and that ease anywhere I want 
so that I can live that that hybrid analytical uh, you know future state today. So, so a couple couple different ways. Um, you know, one I would say uh, I'm humbled to see uh, longtime Matiza architects like Kelly. You know, come over and, and endorse these open source projects like Greenplum, and I th I think the the credibility that my team has in terms of Natiza deployments, but also in terms of Natiza migrations, you know, coming to a partner like Eon or or to Pivotal, uh, who's um, you know one of the the uh, shepherds of support for this product is one way, but we've actually made it easier than that. So in all of the clouds. Uh, and all of the public clouds, you can go to the marketplace and spin up a green plum cluster as easily as starting up a, a, a containerized uh, database. And you can have that cluster scale as large as you need it. And you can take advantage of the other cloud offerings, the other cloud services that exist by leveraging all of the green plum compatibility into those. You have data on S3, we can transparently query that. You've got data that's that's being streamed in from Kafka. We can ingest that, you know, automatically, and so that would be another place that I would advocate it. And, and you know, even even more so, the product that we're talking about is an open source product. You can go to greenplum.org and just download the source or download the binaries and get started. If you need any help, you can always come back to the original Eon or to to Pivotal or, or to some of our other, you know. Uh, well-rounded partners and 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 get the support that you need in order to be successful. But but you should know that um, if you're not looking at Green Plum and you're coming off Netiza, your job is going to be a lot harder. Eon Collective was formed in 2016 with a vision to assess, architect, and automate transformative IT operations and solutions. And as such. The, the company is made up of 20 plus year IT veterans. So there's a lot of expertise in legacy platforms. So we can step into an environment and the environment can be a Talend or an Informatica or a SaaS kind of ETL shop. It can be a, um, a database environment of, of Netiza or any DBMS for that matter. We have expertise in lots of different MPP DBMSs and then various BI tools, MicroStrategy, Tableau, any of those. So we have the domain expertise to be able to step in and assess the environment, understand what the magnitude of a migration looks like and be able to quickly figure out what, what it takes to do that migration and then the skill set to actually carry it out. And uh, as you're taking this journey uh, to Greenplum, I look forward to seeing you at PostgreSQL 2019, which will be uh, March 18th to the 22nd in New York City. Alongside of that, we have a conference within that conference called Greenplum Summit. There you'll find some of the uh, foremost uh, worldwide leaders and implementers of Greenplum software that have been you know, leveraging Greenplum literally for the last, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, because Greenplum has been around in production for that long. They'll all come together. It's going to be a great conference for you to, you know, show off what you're doing and also learn from what other folks are doing.